Mounting tensions in Kosovo as ethnic Serbs block the streets of Mitrovica. Kosovo says Serbia is trying to create a pretext for armed intervention. Heavy fighting continues on Ukraine's southern and eastern front line, but President Zelensky says his country will not give up. Grappling with a monster storm. Driving is banned in Buffalo after freezing weather kills over 60 people in America. The French city of Lyon is reeling after the body of an Iranian man was found in the Rhone River. Authorities are investigating his death as suicide. More roadblocks in Mitrovica, a northern Kosovo town divided between Kosovo Serbs and the country's majority ethnic Albanians. Kosovo says Serbia is trying to stir up trouble to provide a pretext for an armed intervention in the former Serbian province. So the idea of the Serbia and Russia together is to try to make conflicts and crises anywhere where the Western has a role and to, to increase this kind of uh, instability in the region to, to, to increase the influence of Russia and, uh, and the Serbia in the region. On Monday, Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic said he put the army on its highest state of alert to, quote, protect our people in Kosovo and preserve Serbia. Their main issue is the Serbian barricades, which are only a form of protest after everything they did, the foolishness and nonsense they've invented to create conflicts. Earlier this week, Serbia's defence minister Milos Vucevic visited an army base near the border with Kosovo, an ominous sign of the increasingly strained ties between the Balkan neighbours. Western efforts to reach a negotiated settlement have failed, with Belgrade refusing to recognize Kosovo's independence. At least one person has died and five others were injured after Moscow's forces shelled the town of Oleski in southern Ukraine. The attack comes a day after Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, said Kyiv must accept its demands or else suffer defeat on the battlefield. But Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says his troops and his people will stand firm. We are entering a new year and must retain a common understanding of our national goals, he said. Of course, this is the liberation of our land from the enemy, as well as the restoration of Ukraine, the return of our people home, further cooperation with key partners and the beginning of new opportunities. These are all tasks for the near future, and not only for the state, but also for each and every one of us. And here saw mourners gathered on Tuesday for the funeral of Natalia Ryashkova. The 47-year-old was killed when her apartment building was hit by a Russian missile. Attacks on the city have not stopped since Ukraine's forces liberated the territory in November. Some 30 kilometers northwest of Kherson, this small village is in ruins. The few residents left are bracing themselves against plummeting temperatures as the harsh Ukrainian winter sets in. As Russian President Vladimir Putin faces growing isolation on the world stage, he has sought to consolidate ties with a number of former Soviet states at an informal summit in St. Petersburg. In Buffalo, upstate New York, there's so much snow that state and military police are ordering motorists to stay off the road. Some people have been trapped inside their cars after large amounts of snow fell in a short time period, killing dozens in the region. So I want people to understand there's a lot of roads that are completely blocked right now, that have no access whatsoever. And people are trying to drive into on these roads or trying to get into these neighborhoods and they can't. Please, please, you heard the mayor beg, I'm begging, stay home. Authorities have cancelled more than 10,000 flights in just a few days. Southwest Airlines has been much more affected than other American companies by the historic winter storm gripping North America. Many are directing their ire over missed Christmas trips to the company. A huge swathe of the US has been affected from the Canadian border to here in Chicago, all the way down to Texas. More than 100 million people are battling freezing temperatures and disruption these last few days.
A small crowd gathered on Gallieni Bridge in Lyon on Tuesday to pay tribute to Mohammed Moradi. Police say the Iranian national took his own life by throwing himself into the Rhone River. Mourners laid candles and roses on the edge of the bridge, while some participants chanted, Woman, Life, Freedom. The slogan uniting demonstrators around the world following Tehran's violent crackdown on Iran's woman-led protests. Before he died, Muradi posted a video on Facebook saying he hoped his death would raise awareness of his country's plight. When you see this video, I will already have died in this river, he said. This is not a suicide for personal problems. My goal is to draw the attention of Europeans, European and Western countries, to the issue of Iran. Long live freedom, woman, life, freedom. Iran has been gripped by protests since the death of a young Kurdish woman, Masa Amini, in police custody in mid-September. Oslo-based group Iran Human Rights says so far close to 500 protesters have been killed and at least 100 risk execution. On Monday, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi said there would be no pity for those who show hostility and blamed enemies of the nation for mass unrest. In the middle of a cold winter's night, migrants floating in small rubber boats in the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of Libya. Many of them, women and unaccompanied children. These 113 people, however, are some of the lucky ones. They were rescued by members of the charity SOS Méditerranée. Helped to board rubber dinghies, the migrants, some of them in a precarious condition, were taken to the organization's Ocean Viking ship, where they were assisted by the NGO and members of the Red Cross. Now they're waiting to find out where they will be allowed to disembark. As they wait, Italy's most right-wing government in decades is studying measures to limit the action of NGOs working to rescue migrants at sea. It says it wants to discourage charity rescue missions, claiming that they essentially help facilitate smugglers' business. The government's decision to go ahead with its so-called security decree could be reached in the next few days. If confirmed, it will mean that NGO ships can only carry out one rescue before immediately informing the Coast Guard and requesting the assignment of a safe port. But humanitarian groups warn that the compulsory code of conduct forcing ships to enter a port after each rescue will prevent them from saving more lives. The crew of Archangel is preparing for the legendary Cape to Rio yacht race. The young people taking it across the Atlantic Ocean from Cape Town to Brazil will be making history. It's the first time a yacht will be entirely crewed by young South Africans from marginalized communities. When its skipper saw the ocean for the first time when he came to Cape Town as a child, he thought it was just a big dam. To those who didn't believe that a guy like me who come from the rural area to a township can actually skip a boat across the ocean to Rio. So I think it's going to be an eye-opener for the youngsters out there and uh, they're going to start thinking hard about joining this kind of sport as well. So I am excited and I am very happy about this, the, the sport and the team as well is very excited. But hopefully in the future, the coming is going to be more uh, people of colour joining the sport because right now we're thinking about 5% or something like that. He's hoping to inspire a new generation of black yachtsmen as he leads his team on what is the longest continent-to-continent -continent yacht race in the Southern Hemisphere. The crew was all trained at the Royal Cape Yacht Club Sailing Academy, set up to help youngsters from marginalised communities make it in a sport dominated by rich white people. So it, it took a long time for me to actually make my family understand about this sport. Up until today, they still don't understand what I'm doing. Like, the only thing they ask, are you earning something? Are you working? Is that work? They say, yeah. So to call it work, don't call it sport. It's work. So if we say it's work, they accept it. If we say it's sport, they're always on your neck saying, you got a death wish, you're going to die out there. So the easy way to escape was like, this is actually work. I'm working here. This is my work. See, Zatu believes his 10-metre sloop has a shot at victory. But being at the starting line is arguably already a success for him and his crew. 
The Archangel will be racing against more than a dozen other boats from five countries to cover more than 6,000 kilometres of Atlantic waters separating the two cities. The race begins on January 2nd.